Welcome back everybody. In this question, what we're going to do is we're going to graph this function here, negative 3, absolute value 1 half x plus 3 plus 4, and then we're going to state a bunch of properties at the end. So this function here, the parent function, as you can tell, is the absolute value of x. And then we're taking that absolute value of x and then we're transforming it into this function, which is negative 3, 1 half x plus 3 inside the absolute value plus 4. Now, in order to transform this function, we need the transformation values. But we need the function, let me put this in a different color, we need the function to be in this format. Sorry, there should be a bracket inside. x minus d plus c. So this is the general transformation format if the parent function is the absolute value function. And notice how it's close to being in that format except for this one half here. Notice how it's attached to the x, but we need the x to be by itself. So, what we would have to do is we would have to manipulate a little bit algebraically inside that absolute value. So we'd have negative 3. This 1 half we have to factor out. And then we would end up with x plus 3 divided by 1 half is equal to 6. So just be careful with that algebra there, right? 3 divided by 1 half is the same as 3 over 1 divided by 1 half. So um, if we show that 3 over 1 divided by 1 half, 3 over 1 times 2 over 1, right? You flip the fraction if you are dividing it. And then 3 times 2 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1, so we just end up with 6. So just be careful with this algebra here if this is a fraction. And now we can tell what our transformation values are. So the a value is negative 3. k value is 1 half. The d value is going to be negative 6. Remember, you switch the sign. And the trickiest part knowing is that it's 6. It's not 3. So a lot of students would sometimes put negative 3 here. Can't do that because the k value has to be by itself. You have to factor it out and you end up with a 6 here. So the d value is negative 6. So that's the trickiest part of this question. And then the c value is just 4. So what we can do now is we can take the absolute value, the table of values for it, which we know is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This is going to be positive 2, positive 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. And now we are going to transform it using these transformation values. And we know what's the formula when we transform. What's the mapping formula? It's x over k plus d ay plus c. All right, so in this specific case, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the x values, divide them by that k value of 1 half. Now anything divided by 1 half is just that value multiplied by 2. So x divided by 1 half, we don't have to write that. What we can just write is 2x. If you want to keep it as x divided by 1 half, you can. But I think it's easier to just write 2x. But if you're not comfortable recognizing that, if you're not comfortable recognizing that x divided by 1 half is equal to 2x, it's the same process as here, except for the 3, we would just have now x over 1. And when you do that whole process, you would end up with 2x. So x divided by a half is the same as 2x. And then plus d, the d value is negative 6. So this would be 2x minus 6. And then ay plus c, a value is negative 3. So it would be negative 3y plus 4. And now what you're doing is you're taking the x values for the parent function, putting them through this formula, 2x minus 6, taking the y values for the parent function, putting them through this formula, negative 3y plus 4. 
So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 minus 6 gives us negative 10. Uh, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. 0 times 2 minus 6 is negative 6. 1 times 2 minus 6 gives us negative 4. And then 2 times 2 minus 6 gives us negative 2. And then, taking these y values, putting them through this formula, so negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 3 times 1 plus 4 gives us positive 1. 0 times negative 3 plus 4 gives us positive 4. 1 times negative 3 plus 4 gives us positive 1. And then 2 times negative 3 plus 4 gives us negative 2. And notice how these y values for the absolute value function are symmetrical. And notice how the y values here in the transform function, when the parent function is an absolute value, function is going to be symmetrical as well. And these should always be symmetrical for both the absolute value function and the um, quadratic function, y is equal to x squared. So if they're not symmetrical, you should probably go back and check your work, either with the formula or with the algebra. But anyway, um, this is how the graph of the function is going to look like. Now, before you graph it, we could have also checked our table of values by taking our original function, plugging in some x values, and then seeing if we get the corresponding y values. But when you do that, it should work out. So for example, if we plug in negative 6 for the x value, 1 half times negative 6 is negative 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, 0 times negative 3 is 0 plus 4 gives us 4. Or if we plug in negative 4 for x, 1 half times uh, negative 4 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1, absolute value 1 is 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 4 gives us 1. So you could check this table of values with that original function that you're given. And now let's list some properties for this graph here. So first, what is the domain? Well, the domain of an absolute value function or a transform absolute value function is always going to be x can be anything. There's never going to be any restrictions on x. What about the range, though? Well, the range depends on whether the absolute value function is opening up or down. Notice how this one's opening down. And it also depends on the y value, the vertex. And this vertex here was this coordinate, negative 6 and 4. So notice how all of the y values are less than or equal to 4. So the range is y is an element of real numbers, but y has to be less than or equal to 4. Now what about intervals of increase and decrease? Well, when we read from left to right, notice from an x value of negative infinity to this x value of negative 6, the y values are increasing, right? When we read from left to right. So the interval of increase for this function is for x values between negative infinity and negative 6. And if you want to show this in set notation, you can say um, that x, let's write it uh, over here, let's write at the bottom, x is an element from negative infinity to negative 6. And we would put these circle brackets because it's not inclusive of negative infinity and it's not inclusive of negative 6 either. So those are two ways to describe the interval of increase. What about this interval of decrease? Well, notice from this x value negative 6 to positive infinity, the y values are going down. The function is going down when we read from left to right. So the decreasing interval is going to be from negative 6, when x is greater than negative 6, but less than positive infinity. And we could show that in set notation from negative 6 to positive infinity with those circle brackets again.
right? So interval of increase and decrease, two ways to show both of them. What about the symmetry? When they're asking about the symmetry, they're asking whether the function is odd, even, or neither. And it should be pretty obvious with the diagram that this is neither even or odd. Because if you remember, an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis. This is definitely not symmetrical about the y-axis. And then an odd function is rotationally symmetrical about the origin. Or another way to think about it is that if it's reflected in the y-axis and the x-axis again, you would get the same function, but that's not happening with this function. So the symmetry is neither odd or even. And then finally, what about the end behavior? So whenever they ask you about end behavior, two different things. As x approaches negative infinity, and then as x approaches positive infinity. What's happening? So as x is approaching negative infinity, notice the y values are approaching negative infinity as well. And then as x is approaching positive infinity, the y values are approaching negative infinity again. So those are your two end behaviors. So that's it for the question, pretty long one. What we did was we took um, the absolute value function, transformed it, got the table of values, graphed it, and then we can tell what our um, characteristics are of that transform function a lot easier with the graph. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.